Okay, this is the rotations rotations GC file that you're going to make. And so there's two angle sliders, and then these points are for the ver each vertex of the triangle, so those are changeable. And then uh, these are for the X and Y coordinates of centers of rotation. So right now, <clears throat> the first center of rotation is at 3.15, 1.33, that's right there. So if I wanted to move that down, I could change its Y coordinate. I would move it down like this. And suppose I want to move, now center two, I want to move that further to the, to the right. So this is the X coordinate of center two. I want to move that over here. Say right there. Okay, so you have the three points that are the vertices of the triangle, and then you have the x and y coordinates of center one, and x and y coordinates of center two, and so those are the centers of rotation. So when I change first change angle one, it's going to rotate this triangle about center one. Okay, and then I can so I'll pick say I pick this angle say like five around five. Five radians right there and then now I'm gonna for angle 2 it's gonna take the result of the first rotation and take that one and it's gonna rotate it about center 2 <clears throat> so then you can go all the way around for that Okay, so questions about how it works, what's going on here. So angle one, it takes your triangle and rotates it around center one, and then wherever you stop it, it's gonna, wherever it stops, then angle two is gonna, from there, it's gonna rotate around center two. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well. It'll just rotate it around center two. Because that's that's the final position from rotating center one. It's just where it started. Okay. So um, back to you. Veronica, you had a question? Yeah, I'm just trying to understand how in this triangle, like the vertices, like can you move that one in the direction? Or can you move yeah, I mean, so you're going to have GC lines that, that you know, maintain the, the first position. And then when you rotate it, it's going to peel off a new one and rotate that. So Because the original triangle is still there, too. You can think about it. It's, that's, that's not a hard aspect to this. That's not that bad. So because it left the see so left the original triangle. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's just so I mean, how I mean, how would how could you have GC, you know, show this triangle and show this triangle? No, it's not piecewise. And so, how can you have GC show this? That's not that bad. You can figure that out. Yeah, but you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So if now if I move angle one, they're gonna they're gonna go together. But the way you want to think about it is, think about it as you do angle one first. It grab it. You know, it rotates from this initial position. Then fix angle one, and then angle two is gonna take it where angle one left off and rotate it around center two. That's the way you want to think of it. Okay, other questions? Okay, so we need to... Um, well, it, that will be determined by where you put the center, right? So the center is adjustable. 
according to x and y coordinates of center one, x and y coordinates of center two, and where the triangle is based on these points. So that's all changeable. What are the other two? What's letters? Yeah, those were the, this is the x and y coordinates of center one and the x and y coordinates of center two. So remember I moved, was moving the center around? Yeah, that's, that's what these do. Yeah. Jason, did you have a question? So the radius, the, yeah, the radius, so will be determined, like there'll be a radius to that vertex and a different radius to that vertex and different radius to that vertex. So um, there's the segment that is connecting to P1, right? So that's, this is, that's P1, the one that I changed. So you have that segment connecting to P1, shows that. And then again, a segment showing the rotation arm to whatever P1 is on the, on the triangle. Okay, so obviously you're not going to sit down and start writing this, right? So this, there's some things going on here that we have to have some basic knowledge about. So how would you, how could you how could we start working on a problem like this? Mean just graphing the first triangle? Is that the thing? Yeah. Okay, so so yeah, so graphing, you know, plotting the points and graphing the segments between the points, probably we all could do that, right? So really what this what's the challenge to this? Rotation, right? So what you know, what do we know about rotation or how can we what's the strategy for starting to learn about rotation? Rather than jump, sorry, rather than jumping right into this, rather than jumping right into this, I would probably start trying to rotate a single point. Okay. And get a function that does that. How about if we can figure out how to rotate a point? What do you think? Is that a good first step? All right. And then let's make it as easy as we can to start. How? What should we do? Rotate about the origin. We're talking about the origin? Yes, I think this is a good place to start. Okay, and so here we go. Here's a file that does that. And you were going to start with this one. So here is a starting point. So right now I've got it set at 7, 2, but I could change it. So I could change it to, say, 3, 2, and it moves there. And then my angle. Wherever that starting point is, if I start rotating, it's going to rotate around the origin. But if I move that point over to, say, negative 3, 2, now that's the starting point for angle equal to 0, and it rotates from there. And then I could do, say, 0, negative 1, start at 0, negative 1, and then it would rotate from there. So, does that feel overwhelmingly difficult? It feels maybe like a manageable task, right? There's still some mathematics we got to go through to figure this out, though. Right, because no matter what the angle is, we're always starting from this starting point. So right the side that it is, I have to start there, and then the angle starts reaching from there. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? We're gonna do this together. We're gonna you guys are gonna build this file in class today. <clears throat> so how can we what do you guys suggest? What does it look like to What's that? Plotting different points and connecting them. We're not, no, we're just do this file. This file where you, you get a starting point and an angle slider. And so given your starting points, right now it's at negative one zero. 
So that means at angle zero, that's where that's where it will be, zero, negative one. And then we'll rotate, it'll rotate around the origin given that point, that starting point. But then I can change the starting point to say way out here to 10, positive one. And now it'll start at 10 positive one <clears throat> and rotate about the origin from there. Much bigger circle, right? All right, so here's, let's just, so what does it look like to, to, to figure this out, right? To build this, what is the strategy for developing something like this? Yeah, yeah, A is a starting point. Whatever the starting point is, it's gonna, as you increase the angle, it'll rotate counterclockwise around the origin according to that starting point. <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to ask you to start trying something right now. There's some mathematics behind this that we have to kind of flesh out. And I, what I am asking you is, in general, how do you approach a problem like this? That where you have, you've got this starting point, Then we've got all these, right? We've got all the possible results for different angles. So what does it look like to, to kind of work it out or develop the mathematics behind this? What does that look like? Okay, might have to do sine or cosine. Good. What's that? Okay, and then so is that. Okay, so we know that r cosine theta equals x. And in what situation is that? So like if I drew a picture about that. So what is theta? What is theta? What's that? Well, what angle measure? Yeah, yeah. Right, so this is like theta, right? And then R would be this dimension. And then? Okay, that's my terminal point. And so then this tells us that what? Right. Okay, so does that, so and then I've got two points here, right? I've got the starting point and my ending point. The origin, right. So like for which, for which point do we wanna, you know, analyze here? Um, for its coordinates. What, I mean, what does this file do? This file does what? But what, what does it create or do or show, right? What's the kind of the, the end goal of this thing? What does it do? The 
focuses on what? There's only two possible answers. What? 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 No, that's okay. Go ahead. Sir. Go ahead. Um, rotating from that original viewpoint. Right. So instead of starting, I guess at like the typical three o'clock position. Right. Begin at this red point. Okay. So what do you mean, begin at this red point? Okay, that's good. Well, you begin. So when we start developing this, do we want to say this is 5, 2? Do we want to say 5, 2? Why not? Because I switched the position on the graph, not, I guess, in terms of this circle, it wouldn't really help us. How you doing? Come on in. Doing some cool geometry stuff. Well, it's a previous class. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we want to, so the red, the red dot. I'm trying to trying to figure out the, the what to write in my GC file. Should I come here and write? Oh, this is five two. No. Why not? All right. So I I should write five. Figure out what this particular angle is, and then write five cosine of that angle, five sine of that angle. That doesn't sound that helpful. Though. So what would be helpful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. All right. So I want to define this point by the square root of twenty nine. What I'm getting at here is, it can be anything, right? Five two could be anything. So what about this point then? How do I, if I want to get started, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. How should I label this? Five two? Should I put five two? Yeah. And why not? And if not, why not? If not five two, then what? What's that? X and Y, right? Yeah. So let's let's do let's say how about X one, Y one. Because right? that can change, right? That can change. And so it can be anything. It could be anywhere in the plane. We could start with that starting point. Okay? And then? Following along with that? We have to choose the distance that point is from the origin. No, we're not there yet. Yeah, yeah. So then there's this point, right? That the determined by the angle, right? We want to call that? Or we could say initial and final, whatever, something, right? Something that's variable, right? So the whole idea that the, the things can vary allows us to build something like this that can do it for any case, right? Okay, so now what? What is how? How? Where? What is angle? How does angle fit into this? What is this value angle? Now that we've got these coordinates, what is this value angle? So that. Okay. So what? What angle measure is this? Full rotation from where to where? Mm -hmm. 
So the, this angle is from 0 to 2 pi? From the second coordinate first to the second? So what is the angle? Do you have an idea? The angle between the two points and the origin. I'm, I'm asking you, do you agree with that? What's that? Oh, I did. Yeah, that's why I asked you to clarify because I didn't. I didn't hear that. Because you said something about a full rotation or a full. Okay. So. Yeah. Sorry. If I, yeah, I didn't hear that. Sorry, Veronica. So, um, like, this. And so, what angle is it? Is this angle? No. So this is angle. Let me call. I'm going to call it A. Okay. Okay, so can we use cosine, so you said x equals r cosine theta, can I use cosine a? What about cosine a? Is that helpful? And what am I really looking to define here? Am I looking to define x1 and y1 or x2 and y2? x2 and y2. All right, so x2 is some radius times cosine a. Agree? Yes? Agree? Oh, you're giving me. Oh, we would have to add it. Okay. So? A plus something else. You see what they're saying? Do you agree with that? What do you want to call that? Kind of an obvious choice here. Or theta. Right, theta is like the one. Yeah. Well, I just want to distinguish. So if you do A and B, then it's kind of like, which one was A, which was B? This kind of maybe helps us remember a little bit better. Theta being the, the, the standard angle, right? But so, so theta, like the standard angle to the starting point, and then now A is like the angle for the slider, right? So then would x2 would be what? R cosine A plus theta? Agree with that? Okay. And? Okay, where this is R. Is the R the same for both? Okay. So now what, what are we trying to figure out? Are we done? What's that? Angle, what is angle A? What's that? A, so A is just what we put on, what we have on the slider, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so I think I have this picture already pre-done here. Let's see, is it this one? So I've got a pretty version of that. And I think that we are So we got x2, is our what, cosine of theta plus a, right? And y2 is? And what about x1 and y1? What's x1? Yep. And so what, how would we define x1 and y1? What about that? Alpha sine theta. So really what we need, what we need is what? We need x2 and y2 based on x1 and y1, right? So what, how do we get that? How do we get, how do we, we're, we want to define x2 and y2 in terms of x1 and y1. How would we do that? Is this so? Can we just say, okay, here's our cosine theta, so there's x1, so x2 is x1 plus a? No, right? Yeah, because so, this is, yeah, that's like trapped in the argument, right? Theta plus a is trapped in the argument. So, how could we get maybe an r cosine theta out of x2 or r sine theta? Distribute, is it cosine theta plus cosine a? The cosine of the sum, the sum of the cosines? Cosine of the sum. What is it? What is right? What is the cosine of sum? Two angle number. Do you remember? Can you find out? It's really, we need to write. So, do you see why, why we need to do this? So we need to write x2 and y2 in terms of x1 and y1. What are x1 and y1? What are cosine theta and r sine theta? No, we don't want to get rid of the a. We want to rewrite this so that it maybe involves r cosine theta or r sine theta. If you get rid of the a, then you don't have a rotation, right? You need a. So anyone find it? So you would need the cosine a plus b equals cosine a plus sine b. So cosine, what is it? Cosine A, cosine B. Co so cosine, so what would it be for us? For us, it would be cosine theta. Theta. Uh, or, or cosine uh, A. Okay. Minus sine theta, sine A. Okay. See that? And then, Y2 is? So that, yeah, right. So you see what we did? This is identity, right? These are identities for some angle forms. So now is this going to help us to write x2 and y2 in terms of x1 and y1? How does it help us? So this is going to be the r. Okay. Um, and for just for x2, we need to go r cosine theta cosine a. Okay. Um, just that part we could rewrite as um, x1 cosine a 
Okay. See what he's talking about? Okay, and then this one? Okay, our sine theta there and our cosine there, theta there. So can we do, can we distribute and substitute at the same step? Can, you, can we handle that? So what would it be? X2 would be? X1 cosine A? Then minus y one sine a. Is this helping? Very much. Why? Because look, we just got x two in terms of what starting point and angle. That's exactly what we want, right? We want to get that second point in terms of the starting point and the angle. So we just did it. Okay. What about y two? Y1, I think that's right. Okay, but now I want to I want to line up my x ones and y ones here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna swap these. So this is x one sine a. And this is y1 cosine a, is that right? Mm -hmm. I think that's the right order. Is that the right order? Yes. Okay, cool. So this is good progress because now we have x2 and y2 in terms of the starting point and the angle. Those are the, those are the things we want. Notice anything about this in your past mathematical career? What this is kind of like? You recognize how we might we could rewrite this set of equations? Recognize that it could be written in a different form. The fact that we're doing cosine a times x1 and then times y1, and then the same thing for y2, times x1 and times y1. Is there another way to form this? Anyone recognize that? See that? If I did cosine a times x1 minus sine a times y1, and then y2 would be sine a times x1 plus cosine a times y1. Remember doing that? <laughs> You've done it before. Across the row, down the column, across the row, down the column. You done this? Kind of. No? You know the multiply, multiply matrices? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go across the row as you go down the column, and you go across the row. You've done this before? Right? So isn't, isn't, doesn't that embody a matrix multiplication? Yeah. Across the row times as you go down the column, and then across the row as you go down the column. So what does this equal? X2Y2. Yeah, X2Y2, right? So rather than have GC 
have all these separate you know coordinates. We know that GC, how does GC plot points? How do we plot a point in GC? Well, please know this. How do you plot a point in GC? Just like that, right? And you get this, right? So this is a point. Yeah. So rather rather than you know having separate all these separate lines for the x and y coordinates of things, it'd be nice if we could you know do point by point, and that's what you can do, right? With a matrix, with a matrix approach, a point equals. So look, it's here's the what, here's the given point, right? Given starting point. You put it through this process, and you get the final point. And wh what I just said, what's that? You have you start with this given point, and you, that can change. You put it through this process, and it spits out the final point. What is that? Function, right? So we can we can do like a, a function where the independent thing is now a point or a matrix rather than a value and then the dependent thing is a point okay so this is going this is our rotation function what are the, what's the independent a a is the independent And the point and P1, right? A and those are both independent quantities here, here right? Because the final point is dependent on both, right? It's dependent on what your initial point is, x1, y1, and then how, the rotation. Okay, and then the dependent? The final point, right? Okay, so this is called. A rotation matrix because this has this is what does the rotating right this is what takes that initial point and rotates it into the right spot for the final point it's a rotation matrix so imagine doing now the triangle thing I showed you right so imagine doing that the triangle the triangle uh, Right? And doing all those coordinates separately. Doing all the x coordinates separately and all the y coordinates separately. So the first rotation and the second rotation. See how this is better? This is going to be a lot more cleaner and concise if you can, if each thing is a point rather than a coordinate, right? And then imagine doing that in R3, right? In three dimensional space. It's, I mean, it's, even, it's even better. Yeah, please. Okay, so yeah, so now we want to build the file. But, so we want to really think of this as in terms of function, right? So, so um, we said the independence, so you're going to need a name, right? And then your independent things are what? Angle and starting point. And the dependent thing is a final point. So you're going to do the same thing that we've always done with functions, but now you have, instead of all your arguments being just values, now arguments are, can, can be, so one argument is gonna be a value, the other argument is gonna be a point, and then the rule is gonna be actually a matrix operation rather than just an algebraic operation. I'm trying to, I, I've kind of I've forgotten how to do two by two. I think it's in the it's in the menu actually. If you go in, is there a uh, matrix menu? Two by two, two by two. Control, two, by two. Shift, Control shift two, or you just go to the math the math menu. Yeah. Math menu or Control shift two. Okay, but so you want to really think about um, so see see what you can come up with now. You really want to think of the, this as. Uh, we're gonna have a function mentality about this, right? Function mentality, that you're gonna define a function and then you're gonna use the function, right? To 
two separate things, define the function and then use it. Okay, and so before, before you just start typing away, I wanna um, also, encourage the use of what's called dummy variables, okay? Dummy variables. So dummy variables are when you define a function, it's what you're using for your argument, okay? So if you're going to use a function over and over again for different things, it's nice to have, like, another uh, set of symbols called dummy variables that aren't the same as the ones you're going to use when you use the function. Does that make sense? Like, for instance, just a real simple example. If I want to, if I'm going to plot the function y equals f of x, right? I'm going to plot a function f of x. When I define f, instead of using x, I could use like a dummy variable like c. Okay, c squared plus three c plus eight. Okay, so so why is this helpful? Suppose I wanted to graph that function um, using different pairs of coordinates in R three. Okay. So then I, some, I want to write do y as a function of x. I want to write z. I want to do that, use that function as a function of y. I want to do uh, x as a function of z. So do you see if, I've, if I would have used x to define the function, then that kind of uh, clouds the issue here. Do you see that? Because by using C, it's something totally different. Now when I get to actually graphing the function in R3 for these different pairs of coordinates, like make Z the input and X the output, etc., then I'm not confused by the fact that it's a function. I want it to process when C equals 2 and give me the result. F of 2. Exactly. And then as soon as you put f of 2, gc will do that. Yeah. It'll say equals 5. Right? It'll tell you that it's 5. Now your function is a point. Rather than a value, it's a point. You said r of what? p, comma, a. Well, this is a point defined by something. So you define the function. Now you want to plot that point. What should you do? It's the same thing as this. Now you want to tell it, plot the point. So what are you gonna what are you gonna do? Oh you're so close, right? So how do we get how do we get the how do we get GC to evaluate the function at two? What do we say? Okay, yes, but then we have to type in what? F of two. F of two, right? F of two is the key. F of two will then represent and it'll GC will crank it out. So now, now this is a point, not a value. So I want GC to plot the point. Here I want a GC to tell me the value, because it is a value. Now I'm telling I want GC to plot the point. So what do I put in? R of? But it's not capital P, right? R of what? What, what capital P do we want it to evaluate it for? Which is, no, P is the initial point, what we call the initial point. A, right, A. That timing. So A and, what do we want to put here? This, right? So what do we want that to be? To plot the point. What do we call it? Angle, right? Angle. So this defines the function with dummy variables P and A. Now we want to actually use it, right? So we use it. Function notation will give us a point for whatever we put in. What do we want to put in to generate the point? What is our starting point? Capital A, the 
user puts in. And then what angle do we want to have? Angle according to the slider. This is super important that you get this. Right? I don't know what you mean by the X. Wait. No, we just want to plot the point. See, this isn't, this, this is a point now. Whereas before, like F of C, that's a value. Yeah. Right? But this is a point now. So to plot a point, all you have to do is Type in the point. So all you have to do is type that in. And then it's going to invoke the function R. And it's going to say, oh, you want me to take capital A and put it in where capital P was. Yeah. And take angle and put it in for where little A was. And then we'll plot the point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Super important. Yeah, then we're understand that. Okay. So, uh, got to go. We're over. Yeah, do you guys have time now? All right. Oh. Um. Yeah, you can have